Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell and tonight I want to talk about choosing the correct LCD for your legacy PC computer build. I also want to talk about do we really need 60 frames per second for most PC computer games. Okay. When it comes to IBM PC gaming or legacy PCs in general, you have to understand that there are four time periods. Okay? And the time periods do not mix. In other words, it's actually impossible to build a Windows 98, Windows XP computer. Never mix the time periods. Trust me when I say this, you will have problems if you do this. If you are going to be playing games from different time periods, then you need to make a dedicated computer for each of those time periods. This is important. Okay? Um, the first time period is the DOS time period. And during this time period, you had the 8088 processors, you know, your 8 bit processors, Intel processors. Um, you had your 286, your 386, and your 486 uh, processors. You also had a 4-3 aspect ratio for your monitors. Okay. And games during this time period, because many of you that, you that are building these legacy PCs, you're, mainly, you're building them to mainly play games on them. Okay. So that's mainly what I'm targeting. You guys that are building these legacy PCs for playing games, the older PC games. So, the games from the first time period, they're 4-3 aspect ratio, and they usually operate at a resolution of between 320 by 240 up to around 640 by 480. And because of this, I do not recommend using an LCD display, you know, LCD monitor, for this first time period. You really need to use a CRT monitor for the DOS gaming, you know, PC gaming uh, time period. You really need to use a CRT. And the reason for this is because LCDs, all LCDs, or flat panel monitors, they have what is called a native screen resolution or a recommended screen resolution. And if you're going to be using an LCD, you should always run that monitor at its native or recommended screen resolution. Now, a 15-inch LCD like what I have sitting here, hooked up to my Pentium 3 build, okay, I'm running Windows 98, second edition. It's a Pentium 3 computer, okay. This is a 15-inch NEC LCD. It's 4-3 aspect ratio. Um, and the native screen resolution is 1024 by 768. Now for a Windows 98 time period computer, this is perfect. And we'll get into that in a moment. <clears throat> but, for DOS gaming, okay, you really need a CRT monitor because even the smallest LCDs 
their recommended or native screen resolution is 1024 by 768. So if you try to display one of those older DOS games on, on a monitor like this, it's going to look like crap. You really need to do the, you know play the early DOS games on a CRT monitor. And I realize that CRT monitors today are getting very hard to find. I realize that. In fact, I noticed on eBay that the prices on the CRT monitors are going up quite a bit. Oh yeah, before, hell, you couldn't give them away. Now people are paying, they're willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a CRT monitor that's in really nice shape. Like a VGA, you know, um, CRT monitor. Okay, so let's talk about the second time period, which is also referred to as the Windows 98 time period. Okay. The Windows 98 time period, which is what this is here, okay, um, it's still 4-3 aspect ratio, but now you're getting into the later DOS games and the early Windows games. And the processors, processors that were used during the Windows 98 second edition time period, or Windows 98 time period, is the, uh, the, the Pentium processor. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the Pentium 2, uh, the Pentium 3, which is what I have, my machine here, okay, and the AMD equivalents of these, these processors. And you can finally set a lot of these games to uh, 1024 by 768, which is the native screen resolution of a 15-inch display. Now, during the Windows 98 time period, you should use a 15-inch LCD or smaller, not larger. Yes, you heard me right. Okay? The software, I've often said this, the software that you are going to be running on your computer should determine the monitor, and the hardware that you use. Not your stupid ego. This is so important I'm going to repeat it. The software that you're going to be running on your legacy PC determines, should determine the monitor, the type of monitor that you use, and the hardware that you're going to be using to do your build. Okay, Not your stupid ego. And that's what I've noticed all of you doing in your YouTube videos. You allow your ego to determine the type of monitor that you use and the type of hardware that you put into your legacy PC build, and that's wrong. Don't do it. You will have problems if you do. Okay? You will have problems. So the correct monitor to be using during the Windows 98 time period are a 15-inch LCD like this or smaller. I think they, uh, you can get them between 12 and 15 inches during this time period. Or again, you could use a CRT monitor. Okay. Now when I come back from a quick commercial break, I'm going to talk about... Uh, the third and fourth time period. So, I'll be back after this quick commercial break. Windows XP The number one selling and most popular version of Windows. So many people today, including the United States military, still use Windows XP. 
but why? Why do so many people love this graphics user interface? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this special series of videos here on the Hans Campbell Show. Windows XP. Okay, let's talk about the third time period for PC gaming or legacy PCs. This time period is also referred to as the Windows XP time period. Okay? Now, during the Windows XP time period, which is between 2001 and 2014, okay, um, the games during this time are 5-4 aspect ratio. So a monitor like this one is not the correct monitor. You want to get a 17 inch, an 18 inch, or 19 inch monitor, which are 5 for aspect ratio. Also, a lot of the games during this time period, if I say most of the games during this time period, the Windows XP time period, you can finally set the resolution up a little bit higher, up to 1280 by 1024, which happens to be the native screen resolution for a 17 inch. 18 inch or 19 inch LCD. Again, you can also use a CRT during this time period. But for the Windows XP time period, an LCD is actually a better choice, a better way to go. Okay? Um, yeah, and during the Windows XP time period, you had um, the later. Pentium 3 processors. You had the Pentium 4 processors. Okay. Um, you had the uh, the AMD equivalents of these processors. Okay. Now here's something, another thing that I noticed on a lot of YouTube videos. You guys are you're doing your computer builds. One thing, another thing that you get wrong is that you're using um, four core and six core and eight core processors with Windows XP. Don't do that. Don't do that. You have to understand something about Windows XP. If you're going to be building a Windows XP legacy computer, okay, Windows XP was released in 2001. And the, and the kind of processors that were available back then were all single core processors. Windows XP was actually programmed to run the best on a single core processor. And then I think it's, it was either Service Pack 1 or Service Pack 2 that um, Microsoft added the ability for Windows XP to use a second core. But Windows XP does not use four core processors, six core processors, or eight core processors. That's just a, a waste of money and it's just pure ego. Again, the software that you're going to be running determines the hardware that you use. Not your stupid ego. Okay? Alright. So, and, and one thing you'll notice, um, don't take my word for it. Okay? Do your own homework. Run this test for yourself. Even with Service Pack 2 and 3 installed, um, if you do, if you run CPU usage, okay, on your processor while you're running Windows XP, you'll notice something. You'll notice that about 79% to about as high as 92% of the 
of the CPU usage is going to be on that first core. Okay? The second core, you get a, a low percentage of usage on the second core. And if you have cores past two cores, like third and fourth core or whatever, you'll see 0% usage on those cores. So why even have them? Windows XP does not use more than dual core processors. Now I'm not saying that you can't use like an AMD uh, FX processor or an AMD Phenon 2 processor, you know, multiple core processor, like a quad core, six core, eight core processor. You can, but if you want Windows XP to be stable, okay, you have to go into the BIOS ROM and turn off all cores past the second core. Okay, so since you have to do this to keep Windows XP stable, okay, and for your software, for software compatibility with your games and stuff, why even waste money buying these processors? They're much more expensive than a single core or a dual core processor. The processor that I actually recommend, okay, first let, let's get this out of the way. Another thing I've seen in a lot of the videos is that most of you guys seem to be using Intel processors for a PC gaming computer. Eh, wrong. Don't do that. When it comes to serious PC gaming, AMD has always blown the doors off Intel. Yes, you heard that right. That is so important I'm going to repeat it. When it comes to serious PC gaming, AMD has always blown the doors off Intel when it comes to PC gaming. So you should be using an AMD processor, not Intel processor. Also has been my experience that Intel motherboards in general are crap. Okay, i much rather have an ASUS motherboard with the Intel chipset or a gigabyte motherboard with the Intel chipset or another stable chipset. There's other stable chipsets besides Intel uh, 440BX or whatever. Okay, there's other stable chipsets that are just as nice. Okay, but you should be using an AMD processor and a motherboard that supports AMD. And the best AMD processor for a Windows XP build is an AMD Athlon 2 X2. That's what I'm, I'm going to be using in my own Windows XP build that's coming up. Um, this is a dual core processor with each core running at 3 gigahertz. It's a very powerful processor for Windows XP. And it is the processor that I recommend for serious PC gaming. Okay? Now, let's look at the fourth time period. But first, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. <clears throat> coffee keeps your brain sharp. Mmm. I love a good cup of coffee. I really do. Alright, the fourth time period is basically the, the time period that we're in now. It is from 2015 to current time. And this is basically your Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, and Windows 11. And during this time period, you're using multiple core processors, like quad core processors, six core processors, eight core processors, even I think that I've seen 12 core processors. Now, the games, the PC came, games during this fourth time period, the resolution 
I mean, first of all, the aspect ratio has been bumped up quite a bit from the previous time period. Because now <coughs> we're doing 16 by 9. And the resolution has been bumped up to a much higher resolution. 1920 by 1080. Okay? Um, so, this, this is a good time to talk about frames per second. And I'll cover that when I come back, come back after this quick break. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about frames per second. Um, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube lately, and one thing I've noticed, a common theme from just about all of you guys that create uh, videos about legacy PC gaming. Um, you all are talking about uh, reaching the sweet spot of 60 frames per second. And this seems to be, I mean, what's on your guys' brain, you know, 60 frames per second, 60 frames per second. It's like you're, you're regurgitating what you're hearing other people say. Okay? And you don't really know what you're talking about. You don't. Okay? Because remember, there is four uh, PC gaming time periods. And each time period requires a different frames per second for optimum PC gaming. You know, silky smooth performance. Okay, so I want to set this record straight. You, for most PC games, you do not need 60 frames per second. This is so important, I'm going to repeat it. For the majority of all legacy PC games, you do not need 60 frames per second. I mean, here we're looking at Quake 2 running on my Windows 98 computer build. It's running on the correct, you know, time period correct, 15-inch LCD with a native screen resolution of 1024 by 768. The game, Quake 2, is also set at this resolution. And as you can see, absolutely gorgeous picture on this LCD. Just as good as any CRT monitor. Yes, you heard that right. And this game is running silky smooth at between 24 and to 30 frames per second. It doesn't need anywhere near 60 frames per second for a silky smooth gameplay. Okay, so let's take a look at the four time periods. Time period one, which is the DOS time period, okay, um, the games only require between 15 to 20 frames per second for a silky smooth gameplay. Okay. Because you have to remember, the aspect ratio is 4.3, and the average resolution for these games is 320 by 240. That's an extremely low resolution. And that's the reason why I recommend using a CRT monitor for this first time period, the DOS time period for PC gaming. Okay? The second time period is the Windows 98 time period. And the games from this time period will run silky smooth at between 24 to 30 frames per second, as is what is being demonstrated here. Okay? 
The third time period, which is the Wendell's XP time period, um, most of the games from this time period will run silky smooth at 30 frames per second. Okay. Uh, games that came out toward the closer to the end of the Wendell's XP time period, like between 2008 to 2014, these games may require up to 45 frames per second. But again, they do not require 60 frames per second for silky smooth gameplay because you have to remember um, you're supposed to be running your Wendell's XP computer games, okay, on a 5-4 aspect ratio monitor, which is a 17-inch, uh, a an 18-inch, or a 19-inch monitor, okay? And you should have that monitor set at its native screen resolution of 1280 by 1024. And most, if not all, of the games from the Windows XP time period should, you know, I mean, they can also be set for this resolution of 1280 by 1024. <clears throat> this is still low enough resolution to where you do not need 60 frames per second. The only time period where you need 60 frames per second or more is the fourth time period. Okay? which is the modern time period. And the reason for this, the reason for needing 60 frames per second is because now during the fourth time period, okay, we're running uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, okay, at an extremely high resolution of 1920 by 1080 or 1080p. Okay, this is a lot for a computer to keep up with. This is an extremely high resolution when you compare it to the, the three previous video, uh, PC gaming time periods. Okay? And this is the reason why for your modern PC games you need 60 frames per second or faster. Okay? But luckily, lucky for us, most modern PC games suck. I say at least 95% of all PC games today suck. Why do you think so many people are building legacy PCs? So they can run and they can play the older PC games, which are a lot better. Now, lucky for us, the majority of all PC games come from those uh, first three time periods. And they will run just fine at between 24 frames per second to 30 frames per second. So I hope this has cleared things up for you as far as choosing uh, the correct monitor for your legacy PC build and for okay what frames per second should you be aiming for for the different games that you'll that you're going to be playing okay so I hope this is, has uh, cleared things up for you guys anyway that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something Okay, something that will help you out. Uh, my name is Hans George Campbell. And until next time.